Hi there. Let's talk about Craig Elke. Craig Elke is owned by Doors, which in turn is part of the Bacardi Empire. Now, I usually don't get along too well with the uh, the Bacardi side of things. I um, I complain a lot about their rums. Uh, I you know have tasted through the Aberfeldy range. It's made me pound my fist on the table and stomp my feet and cry about you know why they couldn't bottle bottle the stuff any stronger than forty percent. Um, I you know I I will complain about you know. Uh, what else is there? The, the state of Patron. I will complain about the state of Angel's Envy. Why is Angel's Envy? And so on. But they're also putting out the Kregeliki range, which is very, very interesting. So Kregeliki Distillery uh, is right in the town of Aberlour. So it's right next to McAllen, and you'll never believe this. It's also right next to Aberlour Distillery. Um, uh, so it is a classic Speyside single malt scotch whiskey. Uh, I'm going to pour these out. I got the 13, I got basically the entire core range, 13 year old, the 17 year old and a 23 year old, which are weird years. Uh, and I appreciate that. Um, so Kregeliki is interesting because it, it, it's right there in the center of Speyside, right next to these other, you know, really well known distilleries. But we don't really hear about it much. The other, one of the other reasons why Kregeliki is interesting, despite the fact that it doesn't have much of a reputation, is it's got worm tubs. Uh, worm tubs are basically the old technology for uh, condensation, uh, and you've got much, much less co uh, copper contact going on with the worm tubs rather than the sort of modern sort of copper things with the tubes. Uh, which means uh, there are usually more kind of heavy compound sulfury notes left over in your new make when you're using warm tubs. Uh, Wentz, uh, Craig Elegy has a bit of a reputation for having a, not necessarily a sulfury character, but a heavier character, a meatier character. I've, I've had actually had people in the comments of other videos discuss Craig Elegy as a potential Springbank substitute. So uh, I'm going to be talking about it so th that when I when I talk about these, but the main thing is just to review them and see how they are. Um, <clears throat> all right, so uh, all of these I have no idea exactly when these were bottled. I'm guessing 2018, 2019 or so. Uh, this is obviously a store bought sample. These are uh, from from friends, um, and uh, all these are unchill filtered, uh, non chill filtered, which is nice, and bottled at 46 percent, which is even nicer. All right, so uh, let's go through these. I don't know exactly what uh, aging profile they're using. My sense is probably not a lot of sherry casks, uh, which is great because, God Almighty, I'm I am tired of things trying to do the 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 Johnny Walker Blue Label sort of profile. All right, let's get stuck in. Craig Elke, 13 year old, Speyside single malt Scotch whiskey. Double distilled, of course, and uh, probably distilled mostly in bourbon casks. Mm. Interesting. Um, so my first thought is is old school, but that's not exactly right. It's um, how do I put this? So it's a very it, it's on the kind of Glenlivety, Glenfiddichy, fruity side of space side. Like there's a lot of fruits going on here. Um, there's a lot of graininess going on here, but within that, like it's it's also a very it's a heavier style of that side. Like this, okay, I'm really getting initially like like cream of wheat with a side of barley wine. That's There's a beeriness to this, which I really appreciate. Yeah, really grainy, lots of lots of uh, stewed apple as well. Like um, uh, kind of mixed red and green apple. There is something smoky on this too. It's not peat. There, there's, I don't think there's any peat in this, but it's almost like... Um, like if you set some of the apples on fire, or if you set the, the apple orchard on fire, that it's that kind of smell. It's like, um, yeah, like a fruity burning thing. A little citrus too. There's a little like lemon meringue pie going on. White pepper. 
a little bit of vanilla, kind of a creme brulee thing, but not much. This is really dominated by the kind of fruity, beery notes. Ooh, 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 um, sweet and sour sauce. You know, just, you know, the stuff you, you dip your egg rolls in. That's in here. Little pineapple. Yeah, I'm into this. So it's, so it's, it's fun because it's, again, it's, this is not the, uh, the side of space side I sometimes talk about, the herbaceous, um, green tea driven side of space side. This is not that. Again, this is more fruity, but it's a, it's a weird kind of mutant heavier st uh, style of fruitiness. Um, just in case you were wondering, no, this does not smell very spring banky to me. I can see there are gestures of, of, in that direction, the, side of this, the kind of grunginess of this, but I, I don't think this is a very, but I, I will give the, this some water before a final mark and we will see. But I don't, my initial th thought is this is not scoring highly as a, as a spring bank substitute. On the palate. Ooh. This is a fighter. This is really intense, actually. It's, a, it's very bitter on the back end. It's, so it's fruity, and at the same time, it gets quite bitter. So we're getting stewed apples and stewed pears. Um, Virginia tobacco. So like Virginia black, bright leaf, vanilla. Um, but then there's like this intense black pepper meets bitter orange peel kind of thing, which I'm into. Okay, there is actually a little bit of a, a, an herbaceous thing. There's a little bit of like a of like a dried grass thing, a little bit of a basil thing. Um, that smoky, fruity thing, the burning apple orchards. That's that's here on the palate. It's interesting. This is surprise. So it's so a lot of this feels very textbook, like Glenlivety style space side, but at the same time it comes across as very, very hardcore. Um, I'm into this, this is fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, gonna give this a squirt of water and we'll come back to it. Okay, moving on to the uh, Craig Ellicke 17 year old Space Side Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. I think they're still using the warm tubs. Um, there were, I think there were, there was discussions of removing them a couple of years ago. I don't know what happened with that. If I find out, I'll, I'll put it down in the write-up. On those of this one, Yowza. Okay, this is going much more tropical, much more um, uh, tertiary flavor profiles coming in. Can I get nerdy for a second? I feel I've been I've been tiptoeing around this topic for a zillion videos, and I feel I should probably get get it out of the way. Um, so in wine discussion, we make a distinction between primary notes, secondary notes, and tertiary notes. And that's basically a way of saying primary notes are the notes that come, well, in this case, from the distillation, from what's coming off the still. Secondary notes coming from the oak, the, the thing you're aging it in, right? Tertiary notes are coming from the aging process. So uh, the synthesis of distillate and oak, but also the air where it's aged, the the environment, all that, that sorts of stuff. That takes, that third one takes a lot more time and it starts to get a lot more weird. Um, those, that's where the, that's where, um, that's where the fun is. And so what I, so what I mean, uh, when I say this is bringing in tertiary flavors is I can no longer identify what's coming from the still or what's coming from the oak. It's a little bit of kind of a, a, a novel thing. Yeah, this is weird. Um, pineapple, nectarine, but also pine trees. I, I feel like I'm like standing in a, in, a, in a pine tree forest or something. Okay, we're getting vanilla again, some bitter orange again, that burning apple thing. So all those, those original elements are still there. It's just kind of getting a little bit more complex. Ground pepper, freshly ground pepper. Um, that sweet and sour sauce thing is still there. Actually, there's some egg rolls in this too. So there's, there's a kind of savory note. 
a little winter green. And what I'm really appreciating about this is that it does not smell like blue label. So many 16, 18, 20 year old single malt scotches kind of playing around in this price territory just do that kind of musty, sherry, malty thing that Blue Label is doing. And this is not doing that. This is kind of going its own direction. And I absolutely appreciate it. There's a little Kirsch in this. There's a little like, um, but it's like grungy Kirsch. This, it's one with like lots of seeds and stems in it. Yeah, this is fun. Uh, this is a fun nose. Uh, again, it, it, it's 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 very space -y, but it's 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 a weird version of space -y. Um Oh, and the, did I mention there's the beeriness is still here too. It's really kind of been taken over uh, partially by the the tropical fruit notes and the kind of weird evergreen notes, but it's still there on the palate. Okay, so I got good news and bad news. The, the bad news is it's not as interesting on the palate as it is on the nose. Um, the good news is it's, it's still pretty darn good. It's very sweet and fruity up front and then gets kind of uh, bitter and herbaceous and cooling on the back end. So it's very much kind of standard classical sp sipping spirit profile. Um, so what are we getting? We're getting... Again, stewed apple, lots of stewed apple. Pineapple with a little bit of like a like a black pepper sprinkled on top. Um, and then as it goes back and develops, it's suddenly like invaded by lots of basil, um, bitter orange peel, burning orchards. And a little bit of like a, that's not mint. It's more like a menthol kind of note um, on the, as, as you kind of go from the mid palate into the finish. Um, some tobacco notes in here. Hold on. Yeah, still still getting Virginia tobacco, but there's also some burly in here. There's also a little bit of that kind of nutty kind of tobacco coming through. Uh, so like Virginia burly flake. And then that then also that sweet and sour sauce egg roll sort of thing. It's nice. I, I'm enjoying this palette very much. Well done, Bacardi. This is this is solid, and and it's like it's not trying to be everything else out there. I'm I'm delighted. What can I say? I'm gonna give this a squirt of water, and we'll come back to it in a bit. Okay. The third one is the 23 year old, which, by the way. Who out there, who else out there is putting out an officially bottled 23-year-old? If this is your 23rd birthday and you have a little bit of money to throw around, like, what is your other option beyond this? Um, <laughs> sorry. Okay. Let's get into this. Craig Ellicke, 23-year-old, Speyside, single malt scotch whiskey. On the nose. Ooh, gets more tropical still, actually, on... Uh, and more tertiary. Um, we're sort of starting to get, it's getting even weirder. I'm, I'm getting, I'm, we're moving away from the distillate and away from the, from away from the oak into, into very different territory. Pineapple, kiwi, there is white pepper. Um, and like a shot of espresso. So it's like, you know, you, you got a shot of espresso, but then you pumped like some pineapple kiwi syrup in there. Speaking of syrup, there um, I sometimes talk about IHOP syrups as a flavor note. So go to your IHOP, your local International House of Pancakes. Get the, the 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 big plate of different syrups they have, and just kind of smell and taste those to, just to get those notes. So we're getting like the the um, do they make an apple syrup? If they made an apple syrup, it would be a tasting note in this, on the nose. Apple IHOP syrup. There's some cherry, like some blueberry. Still that kind of basil menthol note. Um, tobacco, Virginia Burley again. F 
fruity, like smoky stuff, the orchard thing. It's delicate. It's complex. It's it's um, actually a little bit hard to read this one. It's interesting. So it's kind of on the nose, at least. It's it's going further in the direction that the seventeen year old was already going. But I don't necessarily. I'm not necessarily enjoying this more. Hold on. Yeah, so it's it's got more tertiary notes. It's got more complex, weird stuff coming out from the aging, but that isn't necessarily making it better, if that makes sense. But it's lovely. Uh, let's see what happens to the palette. Yeah, that's extremely good. Um, not great. Don't get too excited yet, but it's very, very good. Um, we're getting the IHOP syrups, the, um, the the cherries, the berries, the apple, but also pine trees, um, f fresh mint, fresh basil, uh, lots of pepper. Burning apple again, but also like a, almost like something green in there, almost like a burning artichoke note. Sweet and sour sauce. Lots of tea. Um, different teas. Darjeeling tea, but also puer tea, like the really good stuff that like might get you high, that, that stuff. Lots of tobacco um, and a really long kind of weird tea tannins meets pepper meets kind of muddled basil sort of finish. Um, hmm. And some like herbaceous orange in there too. So a little bergamot. This is good. And, and it, again, it doesn't feel like blue label. This feels like its own, its own kind of thing. And I absolutely appreciate that. Um, I can give that a squirt. The only problem is at this point, I'm not sure if I actually like it better than the 17 year old, which is, uh, um, I don't remember the pricing on these, but I'm, it's probably considerably more expensive and um, that's, not, that's not great if it's not that much better. Okay, back to the Craig LED 13, now with a squirt of water in it to kind of kick it open. Let's see what happens. I mean, after the 23, this one just smells so much fresher. It's, um, I mean, the, the fruit is from the, and it's, you can tell it's coming from, from what's coming off the still, right? From the, um, from, from the new make. The fruit is absolutely pure. The, the, um, that kind of, what is that? Like a cream vanilla custard thing from the oak is very distinct. In terms of actual development from where it originally was, eh, I mean, it's pretty modest. Um, it's a little, on, on the nose, it's a little more, more peppery. That's mostly the change I'm getting. It was nice before, and it's nice now. Um, on the palate, let's see what we got. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> so, when we talk about the grunginess of uh, Kregaliki, this is this is a good example of that. Um, this gets more peppery and more just like grungy and kind of um, what is it like a there's like a green uh, un, un, unboiled nut sort of note, um, almost like a heavy metal sort of note, like. Uh, um, I don't mean like Black Sabbath, you know, let's just say Black Sabbath. It, it tastes a little bit like Black Sabbath right now. Um, oh, I love the grunginess on this. Um, it's very, this is very good. It's it kind of as if, you know, like Glenn Livett took a level in Badass and, you know, like, started 
growing like pepper and tobacco on itself and had like a big old glass of beer. Like that's what's going on here. This is like, this is like, you know, uh, Glenn Levitt like lost his family to the Thanos snap and it's kind of like got it getting a little vengeful and dark now. That's what's happening. Um, and I'm kind of into it. It's still, I mean, it's not a phenomenal malt. It's, I would only give this say 86 points, but this is very solid. This is very good indeed. And it's a different kind of space side than the other official bottlings I can think of on the shelf. And anything fresh um, on the Scotch shelf that's, that's good is very welcome to me. From the officials, in any case. Um, all right, moving on. Okay, so 86 points for the Craig Allocky 13-year-old. Let's see what the 17 does with a little water. On the nose. Also doesn't develop a whole not lot on the nose. Uh, it's still very much doing that kind of tropical fruit meets meets Christmas tree sort of thing. Maybe a little bit more fennel, so a little bit of like a, um, like a hippie toothpaste kind of thing going on, like fennel and mint. Yeah, it's actually very, very herbaceous on the nose, which I appreciate. Uh, thank you, Bacardi. This is this is this is nice on the palate. Oh, God damn, that's good. Um, that's really good, actually. So, again, it gets more peppery and grungy. We're starting to get those heavy metals in. Um, we're starting to get some, some Iron Maiden, some Black Sabbath. Excellent. Um, this is a tobacconist parade of stuff. There's some chocolate orange going on. Um, hmm. But, I mean, if you, if you appreciate a heavier style of malt, there's also, like, just a deliciousness to this. Like, there's a, there's a drinkability factor here, which I absolutely appreciate. Um, maybe it's a little touch of, like, sour on the back end, that kind of bitter orange slash bergamot thing that it makes it feel a little bit like thirst quenching. Um... Yeah, that's really nice. I'm going to give it an 87 plus out of 100. So not a huge step up from the 13-year-old, but definitely a, definitely a step up. Um, okay. Moving on to the Craig Allocate 23, now with a squirt of water. Let's see what happens. Gets even more delicate, if anything. Um... It's kind of on like like minty tropical fruit, like minty and musty tropical fruit. Um, your dad, who loves Blue Label, would not appreciate this. He would probably think there was something wrong with it. In fact, um, I I really I'm really enjoying this. Like it's a it's a wonderful, you know, apparently well distributed example of what happens when you throw a malt whiskey in oak for a good long time, it starts to develop in these kind of weirder directions. Or not just whiskey, I mean I mean spirits more generally. This is why oak aging and like aging, like t time in oak, not just the amount of oak influence is so awesome sometimes. It's, it's those tertiary notes, not the secondary notes that come from oak the direct oak influence. It's the tertiary notes, the aging. That's what, that's where the, it gets fun. Fun, tropical, herbaceous on the palate. So it gets very peppery more, even more peppery than, than the others. Um, very kind of musty, orangey, smoky, 
so you so it's both an orange or orchard and an apple orchard on fire um let me try that one more time It's so I just retried the 17 just to make sure this one by comparison has more wood and more tertiary notes more of the weird stuff but I don't actually like it more than I like the 17 um, let me give this one more shot in fact if anything the finish might be a little bit weaker on this so i'm going to give this an 87 flat out of 100 so just a just a plus less than the uh, the 17. um both very good but if this one is like more expensive and just a hair bit less good like just buy the 17. um and that's what we got i mean this is this has been a delightful surprise so let me so let first let me say uh, the folks talking about this is a Springbank substitute. I get where you're coming from. I can't get there. I just can't get like this is the 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 basics of the profile here are just so far in this in like classic space side territory. Like, um, Glenn Farkless, Glenn Fiddick, um, like those guys. It, that is where the heart of this is. It just gets weird from there. You know what I mean? Um, as opposed to Springbank, which is kind of its own little beast. Um, but this is a heck of a lineup. Uh, so I'm going to give credit where credit is due. Good job, doers. Good job, Bacardi. Uh, I would love it um, if you treated the rest of your brands like this. Um, give Duce a cast strength, guys. I mean, um, or, you know, at least a 46% a version. Um the rest of your brands deserve to be treated well too okay uh that's all i gotta say these are these are good these are solid especially if you can get them at a good price um 13 year old gets an 86 out of 100 the 17 year old gets a gets an 87 plus and the 23 gets an 87 flat um and that's all i've got thank you for watching and uh cheers